Hello guys, and welcome to another wonderful Couch Talks by Zero Fox Coffee and Games. We've got coffee, we've got games, we've got this dog. Um, today we wanted to talk about Final Fantasy XIV and um, some of the more optional dungeons, the push order, and the importance of them. Yes. Um, In terms of getting the most out of the story. Yes. So we're going to go through a quick kind of outline to tell you about it without revealing anything to ruin the story. Um, would you like to start us out, Zill? Sure. And then after the outline, we'll tell you when the spoiler starts. Yes. So you can leave if you want. So first, round level 50, some point in the MSQ, you'll be told something about Binding Coals of the Hamet, which then you, you can then go open. I would recommend doing that when it becomes available. However, you can't find a group in the Duty Finder. And mostly because it is very difficult content. They released it before they started doing the normal savage split for the normal raids. Yeah. So if you have some friends at level 80, have them run you through it. You still have to do the mechanics because you will die at level 80. <laughs> but yeah, run that if you can when it becomes available. And if you can't, it's a pretty light recommendation. And it's not a big deal. Um, so our next recommendation is a heavy recommendation. Oh, right? No. I... This isn't really a story recommendation, but if you see a Mandarville quest, you should do it. Yes. It has nothing to do with any of the other story, but you should do it. They're fantastic. It is a fun story. I we, I strongly recommend it. It is not necess- It is definitely not part of the core. I mean, it is technically core content. It is just not part of the core content story. Yes. Um. And then also, when you finish Realm Reborn, you should tell your friends that you're playing with, because if they've already finished Heavensward, they can now New Game Plus Heavensward and do it with you and see all the cutscenes and stuff again and sync with you. So, yeah. Alright. Um, so our next one's going to be the Aziz Law. Is I, am I reading this correctly? Well, if you are leveling your crafters in tandem with your... <laughs> combat classes, go back and get one of your Realm Reborn Relic weapons before you do your level 58 blacksmith quest. You don't need to upgrade it in any capacity, so you don't have to go use the forge when you get to that point. Just finish the first set of quests, because that will be slightly relevant. Um, at the end of, like, once you hit 60, if you choose to run Aziz Law, I would again recommend running Binding Coils first, but that's, again, pretty light recommendation. And then, move on, moving on to Stormblood. At some point between completing 4.0, which you'll know because the quest will be called Stormblood, and finishing all of the level 70 content, I would recommend going back and running the trials that are available in Aziz Law. Basically complete them before you go into Shadowbringers, but sooner is better, and that is a moderate recommendation. Heavy recommendation, before you do the normal raids in Stormblood, which is the Omega quest line, go back and complete the Crystal Tower raids, which are Realm Reborn Alliance raids. Yes, this is a recommendation from Square Enix. That one's not. Just the Crystal Tower? Oh, well, the Crystal Tower is for Shadowbringers, which was the next thing I was going to say. Okay. Yeah, do the Crystal Tower, Just period. Just do it. Yes, but absolutely do it before you get to Shadowbringers, because Square Enix said the entire time they... Like, as soon as they announced Shadowbringers, they said do Crystal Tower, basically. And then they made it infinitely easier to get into Crystal Tower by forcing everybody to run it for special stuff. And they, like, made it easier to complete. Do Crystal Tower before you go to Shadowbringers. You are missing out on dialogue if you don't. It is hard programmed into the game. Um, moderate recommendation before you go to Tempest, complete the first phase of one of your Realm Reborn Relics if you didn't do that before. Light recommendation, after you finish 5.0, the quest will be called Shadow Ringers. Pay attention at least once in MSQ again. In the, so you'll have a main story roulette, which you'll probably have done by then. And 
It'll probably be kind of boring if you run it between like the fifth time that you've run it and Shadowbringers. But once you finish the quest Shadowbringers, you should rerun it because it gets better with hindsight. Um, heavy recommendation before you do the Ruby Weapon quest in Shadowbringers, you should complete the Binding Coils of the Hobbit. And then light recommendation before you get your Shadowbringers relic which does not build off of the previous relics like the Heavensward one does. Again, complete the first phase of your Realm Reborn relic. Okay. So, with that, I think that's the end of the list, yeah? Yes. Cool. So with that, we're going to move into talking about the whys and the whos and the whats. So if you don't want spoilers, you should go ahead and meander away from the video. Uh, but don't forget to subscribe and like, please. Have a magical day. <clears throat> For all of those still with us, we're going to start our list back over um, with Binding Coils. Yes. So, what were your thoughts on Binding Coils? Binding Coils gives you a lot of context for how the primals slash icons slash whatever you're calling them at your point in the story work. Um, it introduces some new concepts regarding them that will then come up with some of the story leading up to Heavensward, which is why I lightly recommend that you complete it towards the beginning. But uh, I also I feel like it's it's your only real opportunity to interact with Elise for a long time. That's true. Elise, like that is Elise's story in Realm Reborn, and she doesn't come back really until Stormblood, she mostly skips Heaven's Word, like she's there once in a while. So if you don't do Binding Coils, it seems like she just doesn't exist at all in Realm Reborn, but that set of instances really focuses on her. Like, her specifically. Yeah. Yeah, she comes back at the end of Heaven's Word into uh, Stormblood. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she does come back when you're leaving in. Yeah. Um, and So yeah, there's that, and they, they, yeah, they talk a lot about the interactions between um, um, the elements and the icons or eidolons um, and they talk about they really kind of delve into the mechanics of how those the how eidolons work and yeah. um, it's actually kind of a cool design dungeon I really like uh -huh. the look of it and I like some of the different ideas that were in it it's definitely yeah there are some really unique particular instances in that series of raids. Yeah, it, it definitely, you can definitely feel the age of the instance as well, though. Yeah. Um, you can also see how difficult it must have been because you get in and it's like, you have the power of the Echo, which normally you don't have until you've died a few times. Yep. Yeah. And then you're running around and you can still die at level 80 with the Echo turned on. Like, you yeah. don't have to go on the menu and disable it before you queue into the dungeon. You can just die with the echo on yep. because there are just a lot of insta-kill mechanics in various parts of it. Um, but yeah, so I think that pretty much sums up our some discussion about we're not going to get too in detail. We don't want the video yeah. to be an hour long. <laughs> so what was the next part? Um, don't really need to go over the Manderville. Yeah, the Manderville could be its own vi yeah. video series, honestly. So. Yeah. Like, it's funny. That's the point of doing it. You yeah. get it, some dances. It's fun. It's goofy. You get a lot it. of emotes. And you get some fun, you get some fun, like, glamour gear, too. Like, yeah. You get the glasses, I think, from the window. Oh, yeah! Yeah. Yeah, you get, you get the inspector's eyeglasses, and also at the end of one of the quest chains, you get an emote that's the, that, like, that's the push pushing. your anime <laughs> glasses up and they flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... So, I said get Realm Reborn Relic before you do your level 58 blacksmith quest. This is because when you do the Realm Reborn Relics, you go to this, like, master smith who's just tired of his job being to make kettles, and you think, oh, he'll be so excited to make this legendary weapon for me, and he just hates you the entire time. He tries to get you killed multiple times. It's great. And then as a level 58 blacksmith, you go back and you talk to the same guy and ask him for help with another rare yep. special weapon. And the response is about what you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's just a surly fellow, but in the most kind of pleasant way possible somehow. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we said before you do SS Law, finish Binding Coils for the same reason that we mentioned before. 
Um, and then I said run as a slob before you go into Shadowbringers. There is an NPC who was foreshadowing Shadowbringers who you do not meet unless you do the as a slob trials. Like, the quests around them. Yeah. Um, they talk about a lot of things that go into Shadowbringers, but it's also... The story still makes sense if your character goes into Shadowbringers without knowing any of that. Just like the story makes sense if you go into Heaven's Word without knowing any of these other things about the primals from... Yeah, you just get more out of it, I would say, you know? Like, it's more... It's more interesting. But you can also, like... I didn't do them in that order, and I still, like, enjoyed having that realization. I was just kind of like, oh, it would have been cool if I had been able to, like, predict what was going to happen. Um, before you do Omega, complete Crystal Tower, because the main two, I wouldn't say the main two, two of the supporting NPCs have a very different relationship before and after Crystal Tower. Yes. And if you get to the Omega quest line without seeing that relationship progress, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, because all of a sudden they, they basically show up as frenemies rather than, like, outright... I'm trying to murder you. <laughs> yeah, all right. Which Enemies. was the last time you saw them together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty interesting evolution. Um, then, of course, you definitely want to do Crystal Tower before you get into Shadowbringers. Yes. The entire story basically depends on it, effectively. Yeah, like you can you can still get some out of the story, but there are things that are really weird that don't seem weird unless you've been to the Crystal Tower. And then there's an in, there's a lot of optional NPC dialogue that you do not have access to if you didn't do Crystal Tower. Yeah. Like, it's straight up coded into the game. You cannot select this option unless you've completed that quest line. Yep. So do the Crystal Tower before Shadowbringers, or at least before you complete Shadowbringers, at the very least. Um, but it does kind of give a lot more understanding of why and how and what's going on in the world of Shadowbringers in a world that we already have. So you already have so many questions going into uh -huh. because it's an entirely new world with almost its own set of rules. Um, so definitely do that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the next thing we said was get a Realm Reborn Relic before you go to the Tempest. Yeah, even if it's just one, I think it does kind yeah. of frame it a lot more interestingly because you get to see... So in Shadowbringers, you basically go to a mirror of our world. Yeah, so you see a mirror of a character you would yeah. meet when you were making the relic. Yeah. Um, and it matters. And so, and why that's important is because they're... They, even though they're the same like character model down to like the tattoo, basically, um, they act quite a bit differently, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But in a lot of ways, they're very similar. Yes. So that's what makes that interesting. Um, Hi, whiny puppy. Rerunning MSQ. You get a lot more context for the Asians, Zodiac, and Heidelin. Just all of that in Shadowbringers. Yep. That, honestly, La Habrea already said that you just thought was complete nonsense. Also, you have a lot more context for some of the other characters and what they're doing. And I like to imagine that we're all sitting down at a table and I'm torturing them by telling them this story about how stupid they were in Praetorium. <laughs> 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 so it's me and Sid on one side and everybody else on the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, CJ, have you done Ruby Weapon? No, I have not done Ruby Weapon. Okay. You want me go to ahead. tell you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, Ruby Weapon deals... It's a lot like the Ultima Weapon. It's basically another version of the Ultima Weapon. But there is a character who's in Binding Coils who reappears as a, like, quasi-primal entity in the Ruby Weapon fight. Okay. So, yeah. Which character? That, the White Raven. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Got his actual name. Yeah. But that's. That me too. That actually. Guy. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. That'll be interesting to check out. And then our last one, which was a light recommendation. Was another Get Your Royal Reborn re Relic, because surprisingly enough, when you get your Shadowbringers Relic... So that one's not happening in Shadowbringers. That one's happening... Or it's not happening in the world that Shadowbringers mostly happens in. You go back to your world, and you go find Gerald, and he's... He makes fewer references to the things you did before, but to me that was why it was so amusing. Yeah. Because you show up and he's not trying to kill you off by having you go on bizarre <laughs> quests. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, I think that's all we've got for you guys in this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got everything you wanted out of it. Um, if you want to hear us talk more about any of these things in Final Fantasy or other things that we didn't talk about, please let us know. We love we love talking about Final Fantasy. We've been playing for a while now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been a Final Fantasy fanboy since, um, oh gosh, since I played Final Fantasy IX technically, but <laughs> I've played and beaten everything from 7 forward almost. Still working on Lightning, but... And, oh, I see. And I didn't, and I didn't uh, play the Final Fantasy Online 11 more than like a few hours. That's fair. But it's because I was on dial-up at the time. I know. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much, guys. Have a magical day. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Cheers.